Do you know why she's doing this? This precious little dog was taken away from her mother when, before she had a chance to suckle. Before she had a chance to suckle, this poor little baby didn't have a chance to suckle her mother. And so, since I got her as a little puppy a couple of years ago, uh, she considers me her mother. Yes, she considers me her mother. And so she thinks she's suckling here, but what she's doing is she's biting daddy. She's biting daddy on the tummy. And he leaves red marks, but she doesn't hurt too much. But getting back to, uh, getting back to this. Do yourself a favor. Is my lens dirty there? Do yourself a favor. Go to your local store that sells toilet brushes and buy one. Don't use it in the toilet. Use it on your back. Use it to scrub everywhere. You know, I think it even removes flaky skin. Best back scratcher ever. And you heard it here. Spread the word. Ederim, formerly known as Edward Musker, rose to prominence in the early days of YouTube, most notably for his lip syncing videos. This is the video I first seen him in, and I thought it was both creepy and hilarious. But then I found out he was a sex offender. Guess what I noticed while walking along the other day? When people walk, their right arm goes forward with their left foot and vice versa. Watch. In 1986, Musker was arrested for sexual battery of a minor. His actions were reported to the police and he was arrested the following year he was charged. He was sentenced to imprisonment for 18 months and placed on probation for 10 years. Musker is not known to have re-offended, commenting that I would never sexually offend again. But we can't help but sin. We are all human beings. I mean, we can't help but sin. He does have a point, but sexually abusing kids is a little bit different. But it does raise an interesting point. If he never re-offended again, should he be tarnished for life for one incident? It is a hard subject. But to do it in the first place shows his character and can you ever really trust someone to never offend again? I mean, let's be honest, it's not jaywalking, is it? All of you, you are gonna die! Taking a look at his background, Muska was born Edward Joseph Vianney in 1932 in Corona, Queens, New York City. 1945, the family moved to Florida where he attended high school, particularly enjoying speech class, English class, and the Glee Club. What's the Glee Club? Is that what the TV show is? Is that an American thing? Have I just gained a bit of an education while searching a sexual predator? It was here that he got his first girlfriend and bought his first car, a 1929 Essex. He was voted best personality in his school's 1951 yearbook. Upon graduation, he moved to New York for a while, where he worked in a dress factory, until returning to Florida. So this shows a well-adjusted person at this point. Car, girlfriend, even best personality. But after getting into trouble with the law, Musker joined the United States Army in 1952, where he worked as a Morse code operator. Now there's a gap in his history between 1952 and 1970. But from 1970 onwards, he was working in the showbiz. Musker began his entertainment career in 1970 for KBMA TV in Kansas City as a host of a children's program, 41 Treehouse Lane. He hosted this until 1983. As a television presenter, he went by the stage name Uncle Ed. Now this is all getting a little bit Jimmy Savile. So until 1983, he's a children's TV presenter, and in 1986, he's getting put in prison for sexually offending children. Lovely stuff. 
He also hosted a late night show called Uncle Ed's All Night Live. And now, Nighttime Live, the station with a heart and a pancreas, presents the late night movie. Tonight, Mr. Marlon Brando and Mr. Lee Marvin star in The Wild One. <laughs> I love that announcer. I don't know who he is, but he's great. The following year, Musker, using the moniker Edmus Scary, a play on his name's actual pronunciation, debuted on KNX TV in Phoenix as a host of the Friday Night at the Frights, a late night program airing horror B movies. <laughs> No more kisses. No more. <laughs> Little woman and I were saying, what a wonderful evening it is to have a good movie on Friday night at the Frights. He resigned abruptly one year later. I'm assuming this is where he got arrested and sent to prison. Before we carry on, if you want to write to inmates like I do, then use the service I use. It's called Jmail. It's fast and it's secure and it means you don't have to use your home address. I'll leave a link to their services in the description below. Just go check out the website. Let's get back. After leaving prison, he serves 10 years probation, only resurfacing to the public in 2006 with a YouTube channel with a new pseudonym called Ederim, and he posted 130 videos of himself online, featuring him undertaking strange antics and lip syncing to songs such as Roy Orbison's Oh Pretty Woman. The uploaded videos became popular with viewers around the world receiving hundreds of thousands of views and turning Musker into an internet sensation. Now, I can understand, his life is ruined. He can't make any money, so he decides to make YouTube videos to help pass the time. But this proved to be a huge mistake. He relocated to Orangeburg, South Carolina, where although he was legally required to inform local authorities about his status as a sex offender, he neglected to do so, fearing he would be persecuted by neighbours if they found out about his criminal past. He then had another great idea. He went on a television show in Orlando, where he argued for sex offenders to be given a second chance in society, and also stated that he refused to inform the local authorities about his crimes due to fears for his safety. <laughs> the moment I wake up, before I put on my makeup, I say a little prayer for you. Officers finally acted and came to his house on May 1st, 2009, where they confiscated his alcohol and computer, using the justification that in South Carolina law, anyone with a previous conviction for sex offenses is forbidden from owning either of these. He agreed to allow his computer to be inspected without notice, and it was found to contain no illegal material. Well done, Ederim. I'll get your medal sorted. Rather than being sent to prison for not informing the authorities about his earlier conviction, he was placed on a five-year probation. One of the conditions was that he was forbidden from owning a computer without permission. Now, this is where he thought he was being smart. No longer able to upload videos through his computer, Muska instead got a friend to upload his videos to YouTube believing that this would be permitted under the rules of his probation order. Nonetheless, prosecutors still seen this as a breach of his probation, and he was taken to court in Orlando, where he told Lake Circuit Judge Mark Hill that, I'm frankly bewildered that I'm here. I don't think I've done anything wrong. He argued that he was not a threat to society and was simply an entertainer. I've entertained all my life with his videos simply being done in fun, and I'm sure that most of the people see it that way. Judge Hill did not, however, accept Musker's defense, and on January 6, 2010, sentenced him to five years in prison for violating his probation order. 
Can you believe it? He got five years in prison for having a YouTube channel. In October 2011, Musk's partner, Marion, announced that she had found a tumour in his neck and he was later diagnosed with lung cancer. The doctor had given him three months to live. On the evening of Monday, January 9th, 2012, she announced both on her Facebook page as well in a video uploaded to his YouTube account that he had died the previous night in jail. I was notified a short while ago that Edward passed away last night after I left him. It's a very sad story, but it shows that you should not try to escape your past. It does leave me with the question though, what are these people supposed to do? Don't abuse kids in the first place, I hear you. Idrim obviously had a dark side to him. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new, and if you enjoyed the video, give it a like so YouTube shares it to other people. Until next time, stay sane.